Alright, so earlier this morning I uploaded a film review of the entire fourth quarter, but apparently that's too long for YouTube. Gosh darn it, so they blocked it. All that work down the drain. Alright, I'll try to talk a little quicker, cut it down to more of the key plays, and uh, show you what really mattered most. As you can see, Celtics off to a 7-0 start in the fourth quarter. Let's pick up here after Steve Kerr took a timeout. ATO, obviously, great way where you try to draw up a good look. 9.30 to go in the fourth here as Boston started to chip away. And what's really wild about this play was Andre Guadala has like a layup there. I mean, I thought that's what it looked like they were going for on this play. Like having him be the ball handler, hoping that with Robert Williams guarding him, who's not used to, you know, guarding the ball handler in a pick and roll, Celtics would mess up this coverage and Iggy would get free, and that's basically what happened. I mean, I guess there's a chance that he thinks Robert's coming from behind to swat this, but right here, if Iguodala just lays it off the glass, I feel like he's got a layup. I mean, I don't know why he got up in the air. Uh, obviously, just a terrible pass. Iggy's, you know, a legend, but he's got to prove he's got something left in the tank this series. Otherwise, it's going to be hard to play him at all. Here, this Pritchard layup, I mean, underratedly huge for a couple reasons. First of all, Jason Tatum thought this pass was for him. Look at him there. <laughs> Imagine if he got a hand on that ball, knocked it out of bounds, knocked it off Pritchard, something like that. He doesn't see Pritchard behind him. He thought Jalen just overthrew him. So Pritchard gets behind Tatum narrowly misses, thank God. And then this is a tough finish by Peyton Pritchard. Especially with Jason Tatum almost takes him out, too, because only at the last second he even realizes he's down there. Pritchard, though, to go full speed in transition, stop on a dime like that, and finish left-handed. I mean, that's an underrated, tough finish. So, three-point game now. 9.20 to go in the fourth. We're going to see Golden State. Steph Curry, side ball screen. Robert Williams, good job being up at the level of the screen so Steph can't elevate for that shot early. Iguodala's going to put it down, and eventually Steph's going to back cut and have what should be really a layup. But Robert Williams, again, here he is. Weak side rim protection. That's a dynamic he brings to the series that really nobody else in the series has. And if he can consistently do this, be alert like this, and come over and protect that rim, then he's going to be playable. If not, probably not. That's what he brings to the series. Jalen Brown gets away with a near travel, but ends up throwing it away. Get a little helter-skelter here. All right, three-point lead still for Golden State, and here they get something great out of it. That world-famous Steph, Dre, pick and roll. Boston, if you're going to switch this, Pritchard's got to get under the screen. As hard as that is on Curry, you have to do it because if you don't do it here, then Draymond's behind you, and Steph's just making that pass over the top automatically, where Dre, once again, is one of the best short roll, if not the best short roll passers ever. So if they are going to switch this, that's how they've got to play it. A little surprised that Golden State didn't run really more of this, especially I'll show you on the very next possession. But this, again, is a good look that Golden State should look to get to more Iguodala, good job back cutting on the catch from the corner instead of staying there in the corner where Dre is then able to read it and see that Iguodala is wide open cutting for a basket. So still a five-point Golden State lead here. All right, small, small pick and roll. Warrior switch. And this one's just devastating. I mean, when they're watching this film, they're going to be kicking themselves because what's Otto Porter doing? Like, clay has got this drive bottled up. Derek White can't go up here. This drive's well defended. And Otto, who's switched on to Jalen Brown, has him, has him, and he just turns his head for a second, starts ball watching, loses track of Jalen just for a second. Where is he? By the time he finds him, it's too late. Great pass, great shot. Breakdown that Steve Kerr is going to show film on and try to get Golden State to eliminate. So here, like I said, they don't go right back to the same action that just worked. Instead, they put Iguodala in it. So now, Robert Williams is able to play in that kind of tight drop, not worry quite as much about Iggy. And so Steph is going to get downhill, but with Williams still pursuing, he can't go up. Instead, he's going to hit Dre, and now we go to that famous corner pinch action where Draymond kind of just totally whiffs on the screen. He's got to do a better job, honestly, in game two. Little execution, things like this. He's got a screen Derek White here. Misses on him. 
Now White's able to keep pursuing from behind on Steph. Get a hand on the ball. Thank goodness, though, for Otto Porter setting that little split screen. Free Clay just a little bit for a huge, huge shot. Again, to keep them in a pretty good spot, even though you could tell the tides of momentum. All starting to shift. Five-point game now, under eight minutes in the fourth. Jalen Brown's going to try to get a switch here. Doesn't even get it. Probably his toughest finish of the night. Obviously phenomenal performance by him in the fourth quarter. Mismatch hunting. They just can't get him corralled one-on-one. -on -one. But Still, that's a tough finish. Bringing the ball from the right side of his body. Underneath to the left hand. Underhand scoop finish. Phenomenal take. Ten, as you can see, in under five minutes in the fourth quarter for him. They go back to that Iggy ball screen. And here, Steph sensing Williams up at the level again. Good job kind of at the last second flipping the angle of the screen by Iguodala. And Draymond doing exactly what Iguodala did in the other corner. Again, back cutting on the time of the catch on that short roll. Puts Tatum in a terrible bind, right? Because if Draymond's in the corner still, Tatum's fine because he knows you know, he's not much of a shooter. He's got time to recover. But if Draymond's going to start moving in as Iguodala drives, Tatum's basically got to choose which one of these guys can I give a layup to, right? He, he has to take away Iguodala so he doesn't have a dunk. But then Iguodala, great job throwing it behind the back to Draymond, and now he's got a layup. Good execution again there by Golden State. This. When we got phenomenal basketball, I think Mark Jackson talked about. Kevin Durant maybe tweeted something around this time. Just a big-time play, though. Step up, pick and roll, targeting Steph in the ball screen action. Golden State doesn't want to switch Steph onto Tatum. So Steph is going to kind of hedge and then try to get back to Derek White. Iguodala is still pursuing. Draymond, I mean, this is what he does. He's a great help side defender, but he's going to come in and try to help almost every time. So great job by Robert Williams then just to go right to the front of the rim. Otto Porter has to come over and help on him. Otherwise, he's got a dunk right here. Honestly, who's at fault? Clay. Clay's job here is to be in between these two guys, take the first pass. He doesn't do that quite understandably, I guess, since Jalen had 10 already to this point. But could be at least a little quicker, maybe recognize, try to rotate to Pritchard. Instead, Pritchard wide open in the corner. Great find from Jason Tatum. Golden State got to clean up their defense, put a little more effort into it. But big time shot making by the young Pritchard who rose to the moment in the fourth quarter. Now you're going to see the adjustment game start to happen as Boston, okay, we're getting hurt by that short roll. They're getting two on the ball. Now we're just going to switch it, okay, keep a body on a body, go one on one. Now Steph's going to try to attack Williams' feet. Steph's going to end up getting to a step back. Long two, obviously a shot Steph can make, but not the worst outcome in the world, honestly, for uh, Boston. So look to maybe see more of that going forward. All right, here we're going to just quick skim through the two real dagger Derek White threes, especially this one first, as you're going to see Jalen Brown put a little curly Neal impression on and Looked like he's going to lose the ball like three or four times. And then somehow managed to find Derek White, who hits a tough contested spot of three at the end of the shot clock. I want you to just watch a couple little things here. First, Derek White. This was cool. Look, he's going to cut, okay, and he's going to get to the free throw line. And then look, and then get back out, right? So Otto kind of just relaxed for a second because he saw White kind of cut. And then look at him, back out. Now he's loose. Wiggins does a good job recognizing and finding him, but Jalen Brown on time, on target, and a traditionally not great three-point shooter steps up hugely in the NBA Finals. Now the second one, even more ridiculous, because this one Golden State really had bottled up, and Steph's right there, and he's flying at him, and he's got a hand up, and Derek White's, Pump faking. This shot is just obscene. I mean, yeah, Golden State will live with Derek White taking pump fake contested threes. That's like, are you serious? Be yourself. That's wild. But make miss league. 
Next possession, Steph gets to a floater he normally makes. Good shot for him. High percentage shot. Just can't convert. And now Golden State is in rotations. They're scrambling. Al Horford gets a huge three. How's it happen? Well, let's take a look. After the rebound. Okay, Looney Horford, about even, right? Watch what happens. Big Al, right here. That's called rim running. That's running hard. That's sprinting the floor. Look how much I showed you he was about even with Looney. Now he's got six, seven feet on him. Look how far ahead he is of him now. All right, so that puts Golden State in mismatches right away. Otto has to take Horford because he's going to cut and have a layup if not. Now Looney, who's gassed as hell. This is the impact of, you know, having eight, nine days off between games. He's tired. Okay, so what ends up happening, like I said, they get mismatched. Now Looney has to go run and find Derek White. You can't contain him on the long closeout. Interested to see if Derek White, I don't know, that foot's not out of bounds there. Looks like a little Tyler Hero type situation, maybe. But anyway, uh, so Looney gets beat on the long closeout. Otto has to come over and help. Now, okay, Wiggins can get back out to the corner. Clay right here, I mean, you're in rotations. You got Horford right here. We know he's a big-time shooter. Jalen Brown, like I said, he's been a killer. I know that. But I don't know. On this catch right here, Clay should just go fly at him, not let him get a three off. Then over here, Steph can rotate to Jalen. Otto can rotate to Tatum. Like, now you're just rotating. They can't allow him to just tee up threes like that. I know, you know, he made some huge shots, but he's got that high release. He, he's proven – Time and time again in this playoff, so he can make these big threes. So you got to make things a little bit tougher, in my opinion, and get him off that three. All right. So Steve Kerr, timeout again. Okay, coming out of it, they're going to run an action. Really good action, honestly. Okay, it's a little Draymond. Coming off a pin down, into a high pick and roll for him, into Clay setting the flex screen for Steph, into a pin down for Clay. Whole lot going on. Boston, though, I mean, they're locked in, right? Look what a good job they do. Okay, first on Steph on the back pick, switch. Okay, on Clay coming off the pin down, switch. Tatum takes it away. Okay, look at Jalen on Steph. So, what's going to be open on this play? Looney slipping. Derek White on the wrong side of him. It's open. Dre sees it, but Al Horford saving the day with those high hands. This is why you have high hands on the ball. Straymon, a great passer, great reading the game. Gets this ball knocked away because Al Horford's smothering him defensively. It's a huge, huge deflection. Transition defense. Dagger, again, Looney. He's going to be the one. They're chewing out a little bit in this film session because, like I said, he was gassed. But right here, he's got Al Horford. That's his matchup. It's been his matchup most of the game. Okay? They've got bodies back in the paint. Boston doesn't have a layup. you got to get matched up. you got to find your guy. Too late to recognize, and Horford's got his trail top of the key three that he's always shot at a really high percentage. And Golden State is a little shell-shocked at this point. All right, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Skip ahead a little bit. All right, we'll pick back up. Okay, Adoka was able to stockpile timeouts a little bit after the really good start to the quarter. So like that timeout to settle things down, keep control of the game, make sure you're getting good possessions, good shots. And sure enough, they get a super high percentage one here with Al Horford. Okay, they run a little pin down for Marcus Smart into a ghost screen. A little slip screen creates a little driving gap for Tatum. And then, Al, look, I mean, this is the shot that Seth Partnow and all these guys always say is dead. And it basically is. That's the one thing they're right about. This spot up long two is pretty much dead in the NBA. But guys like Horford came in the league a while ago. He's one of those OG vets that still got it in his, in his arsenal. Okay, so when he's able to just camp out in this short corner right here, Draymond goes to help. And now Al's right there for a shot that's probably like a 90% shot for him. I'm saying this wide open catch and shoot too. I mean, that's a shot he's going to make 80-90% of the time in a game. So that's that's easy money. That's where, you know, people that appreciate like a mid-range jumper, yeah, Al could step out to the three and it's a higher point per possession shot, expected value shot, et cetera, et cetera. But you're up six, 340 to go. 
If you can tell me you got almost a guaranteed two, like a 80, 90 percent two, I'm taking that shot. Okay, just getting a score there, huge. Eight point game, 335 to go. It's a huge, huge bucket, hugely important. It's something the analytics don't always realize when it, you know, is that compared to like Andrew Wiggins taking contested threes. You can't always get a good three on a possession. Golden State, here was their ATO. Run a little horns chest action. Boston again, they're locked in. Switch, flare screen, switch. Draymond is open for a second, but Horford recognizes and gets to him. Fly around, Dre ends up getting loose underneath, but you make him earn it at the free throw line. Good hard playoff foul. Make Dre have to earn it, which he doesn't do. Misses not one. But two free throws here. And then Udoka coming down the court. Again, has timeouts. Use it or lose it. Three minute. Take another one. Why not? Two in a row. Let's keep controlling the tempo. Making sure we execute and try to get good looks. All right. Uh, Golden State came out in that zone. Showed a little bit of that kind of 1-2-2, 3-2, two, 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 whatever you want to call it. Al Horford right here, huge offensive rebound. Marcus Smart, pretty much the dagger three. Actually, he had two dagger threes down the stretch. I'll show you both. But what's a zone susceptible to? Offensive rebounds and threes in particular. So that's the danger for Golden State. Zone wasn't terrible for them. Wouldn't be surprised to see some more of it, but they got to execute better. Here, probably my favorite Boston defensive clip of the night. Okay, so this is Golden State ATO play, right? Coming out of a timeout. So, favorite action for them. Steph hits. Call this a through cut. It's going to cut through, pop back out, and then they got Draymond sprinting into a side pick and roll. They love this play. They've been running it forever. And then watch. Marcus Smart's the one guarding Draymond, right? Dre gets away with a little push off. So, Marcus Smart was trying to tell, I think, Derek White to switch it. Then he realizes, you know what? That's a bad idea. White doesn't even see what's going on. So, Marcus Smart was so far behind, there was no coverage, meaning Draymond's going to be able to set the side pick and roll for Steph, and nobody's there guarding Draymond. So Steph would have a wide open three right here. Okay, why doesn't he? Yes, he did tweak his uh, ankle or toe or whatever a little bit, but I want to highlight even more. Who really comes over and gets a hand up and makes sure he can't elevate right here? Al Horford. A lot of people probably saw this clip in the game and were like, oh, Al Horford's in a pick and roll. You know, he's the big man. He wasn't in this pick and roll. He's guarding the ball, <laughs> Andrew Wiggins. But this is just next level alertness, veteran savvy, just seeing, recognizing the play, recognizing what's going on, recognizing there's nobody here guarding Draymond. So he makes a split second decision. Somebody's got to get here. Might as well be me. Get Steph off the shot. Wiggins, got to shoot this. He's got a shot right here. Tatum rotates to him. Look at Derek White doing a great job. Look, he's got Clay, but he's still got to at least stunt at pool, be in the passing lane, knocks it out of bounds. Jason Tatum appreciates the effort. And look at Al even, who's, even though guarding Wiggins, look at him flying around the court, is going to end up sprinting to that corner to be ready to get to Clay. I mean, that's big time hustle, defensive effort from Boston. Wiggins ends up missing a three. We're going to get down to. The nail in the coffin right about here. As you see, Golden State going scoreless in over four minutes. Marcus Smart, another small, small ball screen targeting Steph. Don't want to switch it. So what's open? The pop. Pick and pop. Marcus Smart. Steph can't leave Tatum too early, but also can't leave him this late. Marcus Smart improved so much as a shooter over his career. Big time three to essentially ice it and give Boston the Game 1 win. Thanks for watching. Thumb up, subscribe. I'll have more content from Game 1 this weekend and good content all finals long. Scout with Brian. Appreciate you guys.